Hey there, I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to look at how we can create a zooming option for our first person camera. As you can see, I'm able to hold a key on my keyboard and zoom in and when I release the key, I can zoom out. It's a very simple system to set up, so let's jump right in and see how it's done. Here I'm going to use the enhanced input system to give input to my character. So let's open up the first person folder and go to the inputs folder. Let's create a key and then assign it to our input mapping context. So right click, go to the inputs and input action. Let's name it zoom and then here we can create a new mapping and here we can choose the key we made uh, let's set it for example on Z and now we are good to go now just open up the first person blueprint and then you are able to use the key you made and you can give input uh, using this system just right click type zoom and here it is now what I want to do is to set the field of view of my camera so here right click set field of view and he can automatically find the first person camera but uh, if for some reason it did not just uh, drag this camera here and connect it to your target pin our default field of view is 90 degrees so for example if we set this on 40 and then call it by the key we made we can create the zooming effect here as you can see when I hit Z, my camera is zoomed in. In order to zoom out and go back to our default field of view, we just need another function and this time set it back on 90. We also want to connect the camera to the target and then if you connect it to the uh, completed output, it means that when we hold the key, it will set the field of view on 40 and when I release it, it will set it back to 90. As you can see when I release the key, it goes back and when I hold it, we have the zooming effect. Another thing I want to mention here is that we can create a smooth transition between our field of views. In order to do that, we just need a timeline node. Just right click type timeline and add it to the event graph all right now i want to be able to control these values here using a float track so double click on your timeline and create a float track the values i need are 90 and 40 because uh, we want to go from 90 to 40 and this way we can have a smooth transition right click and add a key set the time on zero and set the value on 90 and then create another one set the time on two and set the value on 40. hit these icons here to frame your keys properly and now you can see that we are are going from 90 to 40 in two seconds let's also set the length of the timeline on two and now we are good to go now just uh, plug in your track and then uh, let's connect this to our timeline and see how it looks Now you can see that we have a smooth transition between 19 degrees of field of view to 40. In order to be able to go back, just uh, connect this completed output to the reverse node and that's it. So we do not need this additional function anymore and this one is uh, enough. What happens here is that when we hold the key, it goes from 90 to 40 and when we release it, it goes back and goes from 40 to 90. We can also set this on one so it uh, transitions a little faster and we can also select these uh, keys and set them on auto. So we have this smooth curve which helps it look even better. Now let's compile and play. And as you can see, we have this clean and smooth transition between 
or two field of views. I also have a video about the timeline node in which I explain all the pins and all the outputs. Uh, this is a very handy note and I really recommend watching the video so you have a complete understanding about this note so you can implement it in your project easily. Yeah, that's it guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you later.